Hello there, my very good friends. On today's wrestling news, we're going to talk about WWE Cinema. Cody Rhodes hitting a major milestone. Could we see a wrestling show at The Sphere? And wrestling fans, uh, I don't believe I have to say this again, but don't be a dick. Yeah, don't be weird at shows. That's strange. Don't do it. I'm Adam Wilborn. And I'm Andy Murray. And this... It's the news. All right, we're going to kick this one off by talking about my least favorite word of the weekend, uh, cinema. I think I saw that posted more than the word and. Yeah. <laughs> more than I, more than you. Uh, yeah, we, it, it, it was the most spammed term of the weekend on account of that Cody and Roman segment from SmackDown, which was filmed at Georgia Tech uh, on the field. Um very atypical wrestling segment in that it was shot with like swooping cameras and tight close-up faces and like oh. dramatic turns and swoops and things. Uh, it was the talking point of the weekend. Yeah. Um, it started a whole ass fight between people. I, I mean, I don't know. I think you should just let people enjoy stuff really <laughs> uh, if they're into it. Look, not my cup of tea, but if it's yours, good. Like, I'm glad people are happy. Um, don't be a bitter old fart. <laughs> um, but according to PW Insider, there's a bit of a bit of a scoop ski on this. Paul Heyman was hugely involved in this thing. Actually, the term they use is intricately involved. Ooh. So it is, you know, he's sewing it together or something like that. Um, he had a lot to do with it and he personally directed the talent for the scene. So he was the one in the director chair with that thing. What's the thing that goes? The, the clapper board, is it the, called? The clapper. We did have one, I swear. <laughs> we used to, yeah. I don't know where it went. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that goes <laughs> missing in this place. Uh, De Clapa is certainly one of them. So yeah, Paul Heyman, huge hand in all of this. I mean, it's not a massive surprise. He's had a huge hand in everything Bloodline yeah, related yeah. Uh, from day one. He's been hugely instrumental in that, just as he was instrumental in Brock Lesnar before uh, and whenever Brock is returned, which hopefully won't happen again. Mm. Um, he's, he's the Bloodline guy. It, it, it's his baby uh, in so many ways, and this is the latest example of that. I loved it. I thought it was absolutely sensational. I'm so excited to talk about it with Hamflot on the SmackDown Review podcast later on today. Yes, and I can understand people getting wound up by it, but also they don't need to bother hosting the Emmys next year. Just give it all to that. Was... <laughs> See, that takes like that. Takes like that blow my wig off. Wrestling is not winning an Emmy. No. It's, 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 Good point. Good it's point. wrestling. Let's just go straight to the Oscars. Come on, guys. <laughs> like, actually, what about the Nobel <laughs> Peace Prize? <laughs> it was all, yeah, all of them. <laughs> Uh, time person of the year, uh, Paul Heyman. Yeah, unsurprising that he was heavily involved yeah. in this. Like you say, he's, he's involved in all the good stuff involving the bloodline. Uh, I thought it was really, really good, obviously, but uh, I'm just more excited to see them as the mega powers at Bad Blood, to yeah. be honest. And when they're going to explode. Oh, you're in my yeah. way. Oh. It's good stuff. It's good storytelling. I'll rewatch like, it again before we review it. <laughs> yeah, like, like, you know, the presentation's not for anyone, but, like, why would you make it... Why? Why would you just like get angry about yeah. it? I don't, I don't understand. Don't that. like it. Don't, don't watch, watch it. it. Don't watch it. Yeah, unless you're paid to do it for your job, yes. right? Like just don't just yeah, ignore it. Go and watch something else. Yes, yeah, go watch. I watched a bit of SpongeBob SquarePants over the weekend. Yeah. Still, still holds up. So there you go. watch the Queen of Villains on Netflix. It's really good. I need to. I've got uh, like twenty things on my must-watch thing. But Paddington Two. There's never a bad day to watch Paddington Two. Imagine not liking Paddington Two. I right? know. What kind of psychopath would not? Take your guesses. On who in the What Culture Office doesn't like Paddington but Two? I don't understand. How you could not enjoy Pat. Like it's just it's a little nice bear, and everyone in the, the the film, the gimmick is everyone is depressed, and then they meet Paddington, and they're not depressed. What's his name? The, Brendan Gleeson. Brendan Gleeson. Oh. oh my God! What a turn! What a babyface turn it's, as well. It's and he's been in a lot of good films. You might not like your rom coms, but he's in a lot of good films. It's Hugh Grant's greatest performance I've oh, ever seen. He's magnificent. Hugh Grant in his later years is just plays weirdos in films. Killing the game. Have you seen him in The Gentleman? Oh, have he's I? Really good in that as well. Anyway. And in that, was he in the new Willy Wonka as well? He, he, I don't know, but he would be a good Willy Wonka himself, wouldn't he? <laughs> He's a silly little guy. Anyway, this is the Paddington 2 news. Uh, I mean, that's actual. It's still goaded. And by the way, that's actual cinema. it's not who you might think it is, but take your guesses in the comments. Anyway, one half of that amazing segment was Cody Rhodes, of course, and he's hit a major milestone, as reported by Fightful. Uh, amazing this. He is moving huge merchandise. Look, no surprise there, but in terms of the levels, this is where he's at now. Sources close to close to fanatics, obviously involved in all this, have confirmed to Sean Rossat of Fightful Select that Cody Rhodes has hit their top five overall in sales for 
any athlete or personality. That's how much he is breaking through. They previously reported he was in the top 10. He's moved up even more. Uh, he's earned the public endorsement of Fanatic CEO Michael Rubin, who's declared him as the top WWE merch seller. Um, there aren't any other wrestlers currently in the top five. Not really a surprise that. But yeah, he's right up there with the biggest sports and athletes, sports stars and athletes yeah. in the world. Um, no real surprise that Brat Bloke wants to sue him, basically. Yeah, yeah. Shout outs to Wes from American Nightmare. Uh, the one day, the one day he would have been able to talk about hardcore music when we're doing that lawsuit story, I couldn't do the video. Cool. Oh, yeah. yeah great stuff. I don't have to crowbar my references in for this one. Crowbar a band, aren't they? Missed it, yeah. Thing? They're coming back to Newcastle in uh, February with uh, uh, Napalm Death. Napalm Death. And Full of Hell. And uh, a new band called uh, Bag of Hammers. <laughs> So. And they play a cover of Ten Ton Hammer by Machine Head. <laughs> what was the story? I've forgotten. Cody Rhodes He's merch. He's selling loads of merch, yeah, of Im- course. You'd imagine that wrestlers are... I, I don't know a good way to phrase this. Wrestling is a bit more personality-driven. Yes. You get like, lots of custom designs and stuff. Um, so you'd imagine that wrestlers would fare well and stuff like this, but this is still a major W. Yeah, wrestling like, is still a niche compared to other big Yeah, abso- absolutely. And you'd imagine um, that... Wow, what's the point I'm trying to make here? It's gone out the window. He's buying nice presents for Brandy because she knows how much money he's making. There you go. He buys all of the t-shirts yeah. and gives them to Brandy. That's that's the gift. Um, but it's good. Like, it, and it just makes like occasionally. There was one this weekend. Occasionally, you see comments like, "Oh, Roman should have won a Mania," or "Cody's oh not this." God. And it's just like, "Oh my god, that's just unserious." That's just completely unserious. This is a boom period for WWE, and he's at the head of it. It would have been huge for the content game if he'd lost again at WrestleMania, oh but. God. You know, rubber chicken sales would have gone through the roof. You just have to wait for The Rock at WrestleMania 41, baby. Oh my god, I can't if you wait. smell, I'm vacating the title because like a movie. <laughs> Bye. Well, I'm keeping this one that I've just made. That's what they'll do, isn't it? They'll do that and then they'll do Cody versus Roman for the vacant belt. Yeah. Afterwards. There you go, simple. Why not? Yeah. <laughs> it's fun. Uh, let us know down below what you think of the Code Man, I guess. Uh, and Paddington, too. Yeah, yeah. please do. Who'd you like more, Cody or Paddington? Ooh, that's a tough one. I that's think that's a good match. I'd like a match I'd like to see. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, Paddington's a bit of a klutz. Like, yeah, but he's a good, good in hardcore matches. I've heard he is, he is gangster. To be fair. <laughs> oh my god, I've never seen a man do that with marmalade. Well, he's a bear, so you know, he still haven't seen a man do it. Uh, right. Wrestling in the sphere. Let's talk about Please. that. Please. Uh, the only place in the world that has higher production video values than this studio. Indeed. If you saw the UFC show... The screen's still working yeah. today. <laughs> yeah, the lights are on. It's good. We haven't had any faults yet. <laughs> uh, right, Wrestling at the Sphere. Fightful. I have a report here. It's from a Q&A where, where Sean was asked about Wrestling at the Sphere. Um, he said he doesn't know anything about WWE reaching out to run this venue. In La- if you've not seen the venue, just Google it. It's incredible. Yeah. Uh, in Look Las at that Vegas. opening video from the UFC the other week yeah, as well. Oh, my completely God. Completely bananas. Um, AEW and Tony Khan have reached out about it, um, but he doesn't know if we're going to end up seeing a wrestling show there. Um, the cost is yeah. insane. Um, he notes that the, the LED ball <laughs> she's having a ball in the middle of Vegas. Uh, that costs 450 grand a day to run, Jeez. right? And running the venue could be nor running the actual venue could be north of one million dollars. Um, so the event would have to make sense. It would have to make a lot of fiscal sense. The UFC did 20 million in gates, which broke their own record. But I think Dana White and, you know, pinch of Dana, obviously, yeah. uh, said that it cost over 20 to run. So, you know, it's like, it's more, you said before we started today, it's more of a flex do than it, an economic I, thing. WWE or AEW have both got unlimited amounts yeah. of money. Just do it as a flex. Yeah, exactly. Like, wrestling would look incredible yeah. in there. Like, it would look unbelievable. The video, 360 degrees or whatever, unbelievable. Yeah, I'd, I'd love, love, love to see it. I don't see it happening for the reasons you've laid out there. Although... You know, with the way WWE's selling tickets right now, they could sell a million dollars per ticket and probably still sell out. They could charge a million dollars per ticket and the main event could be Solo Sokoa bottling farts and they would <laughs> they, they would sell out. Like, they've got Jake incredible Badu, brand loyalty. I love you bottling farts! <laughs> yeah, he's, uh, he's labelling them. There's a little production line going yeah. on. Uh, yeah, they've, they've got an audience and this is a great place for them to be and this is a huge compliment that will buy tickets. Yeah. Just hoover them up. And it helps that they're really into the product. Just do it. You've got the money, yeah, both of them, AEW and WWE. Exactly. Like, Tony Khan's richer than the, the very rich people. 
imagine just our Orange Cassidy's really lazy graphics on that book. <laughs> Whatever. Just the white with the crap text. It'd be good. <laughs> Make this 3D or something. Why not? Yeah. No word on whether there's going to be a wrestling show there, but we are working on getting the What Culture live show there for WrestleMania. <laughs> Tickets start at $5,000. Hey, don't forget to uh, sign up. WhatCulture.com for some tickets. Hell yeah, baby. Uh, right, let's conclude with something. The good and bad of wrestling, I'm like, I'm calling this. Yeah. Uh, it's a post. It's from a post on Squared Circle from a, a user called Salt Tough from uh, this weekend's AW Collision show that is the personification of wrestling can do lovely things but also fans can be dickheads sometimes. So this user says they were at the Collision show in Springfield uh, last night and saw an incident that they shared. During the 10-man tag, Roosh got his shirt ripped, uh, he took it off, threw it into the crowd and it lands right in front of this kid uh, and everyone goes to grab it basically and it ends up with a child and a man having a tug of war for it. At that moment, you gotta take a look at your life, right? Yeah. Yes, yes. You gotta think, right, it's Roosh's shirt and this is to make this kid's life, but uh, no, no, I want it, I'm gonna yeah. get it signed at the airport. I'm 45 whatever. years old. Yeah. The guy just ripped it away, almost knocking the kid over. Uh, the kid was obviously upset and the guy acted like nothing happened despite people around him being like, hey knobhead, give him the shirt. Yeah. I, I wouldn't have been able to just stand there if, if, like, not, I wouldn't do anything, but if that had been me and someone had been like, come on, mate, I'd yeah. have been like, out of cringe, I'd just been like, I'm really sorry, I got the moment to got away from me. Anyway, yeah. the kid was visibly upset, he sat down, looked pretty bummed out, but the good side of this story is after five, ten minutes, a crew member went over to the kid, gave him a hat, um, he must have seen it and said something, basically. The kid was buzzing, hat, uh, had a big smile on his face, and... Someone let him sit in the front row for Rampage after good. that. So some good, good news uh, regarding that. But I think uh, Salt Tough, the user who posted this, summed this up. As for the guy who took the shirt, if you happen to be lurking here, you suck. Grown-ass man acting like a selfish little child and almost ruining this kid's night. Your behaviour is that of a loser. Be a better person. I couldn't have put it better myself. Yeah, absolute loser behaviour. Imagine being a 30, 40-year-old man, whatever the age of this person was, and going, yes, I am going to beat this child in a tug of war for a rip t-shirt <laughs> just go around to his house see that shirt pulled that out of a child's hands yeah so. i'd be a 12 year old for this so cooler than it's, you it's like when you see those people at like the baseball games i always like the nice ones where it's like someone catches a ball give it to the kid and it just because he just goes to them and then they yeah. go hey little kid there you go there you are and they're yeah. like that's literally oh this has made made my year sort of thing yeah but the one where they're like scrubbing like give it here yeah yeah it's whack it's yeah. just Baby behaviour, uh, I'm sorry that, that your life has turned out that way, yeah. if, if that's you. I hope, I hope, I hope you're proud, I hope you're happy. Hope you have, I hope your next poop is a porcupine. <laughs> there you go. And on that note. <laughs> I hope you right. turn on the shower this morning oh. and Vindaloo comes out. Fat Les. Fat Les, there you go. <laughs> On shout, that note, shout out to Fat Les. Yeah, shout out to them. Uh, normally, good money in the sort of European Championships, yeah. World Cup years, isn't it? So, a bit of a fallow period for them right now. So, Big just help them out. Yeah. Uh, we'll be back later on today with more news. But for now, check out this video right here. We'll see you soon. Bye.